live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Watching the cloud cover for today as we hope to take a look at the eclipse this afternoon. I'll show you where it looks cloudiest. And we're working to learn more about a possible shooting at a gas station in Fayetteville. What we know about the investigation. And many people here in the triangle hoping to get a glimpse of a partial eclipse here. I'll give you a look at some of the watch parties happening in the triangle. An exciting day for so many, so many people looking forward to this. They're calling it a once in a lifetime yeah. thing. Happens every 20 years. The next one's not going to happen for another 20 years. So. Right, right. We're spoiled because the, yes. the one happened in 2017. But, yeah, but the next one. one, not going to be for a long time. So we'll talk about that coming up. Thanks for joining us on your Monday, your solar eclipse Monday. I'm Michelle McConaughey. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Yeah, great to have you along. It's a busy weekend. Now yeah. it turns into a busy start to our week in a fun way. Elizabeth Gardner is over in the WR <laughs> Weather Center. We're clear right now, and that's good. That uh, looks beautiful here at downtown Durham. Lots of sunshine here. Now, north of Durham, it's possible that we would see more cloud cover about the time of the eclipse. Heading out the door right now, temperatures are starting to creep up. We're up to 49 degrees in the triangle, and our winds are currently light. We move uh, future cast here from uh, 8 o'clock to lunchtime and pause it, where we're completely clear. But future cast continues to show the potential for some clouds, especially in our northern counties this afternoon. The eclipse for us will begin right around 2 o'clock and peak at about 3.15, and you can see the potential for some of those clouds to drift a little farther south. Uh, watching the, the different runs of the computer models this morning, it's more consistent that we would see some clouds up near the Virginia line and clear skies from, say, the Triangle area southward. But we'll be watching that for you closely. Uh, once we move past today, we get into a little better chance of some clouds and rain later in the week. Our cloud cover on this version of Futurecast is only about 10 to 15 percent in the Triangle area anyway for this afternoon. Our temperature is currently still in the upper 30s, Roxborough and South Hill. Elsewhere, looking at 40s as you're stepping out the door this morning. Hour by hour, we're upper 60s at lunchtime and mid to upper 70s for highs this afternoon. So a nice big warm up as our winds shift to southwesterly. We have rain that comes in starting tomorrow, and I'll show you which day looks the wettest coming up. Brett. Thanks, Elizabeth. Let's take a look at traffic. I'm Brett Neeson for Brian Trader on a Monday morning at 8.02 right now. And if you're heading out the door, we do have a few crashes to tell you about and a little bit of a, a, a lot of slowdowns out there, especially on the Beltline as you approach Capitol Boulevard. 440 westbound, uh, looking like it's uh, giving yourself an extra 10, 15 minutes. And another spot that you're going to want to give yourself an extra 10, 15 minutes is on Capitol Boulevard as you approach Perry Creek Road right there north of 540. I know a lot of folks are familiar with that intersection. It's normally a slow intersection, regardless of if there's a crash there. But there has been one that's been out there for a little over an hour now, and a lot of red and yellow on the sensors. Let's go look at uh, Rock Quarry Road. That's an earlier crash. I'm seeing some improvement on the sensors in that one there near I-40. Uh, I and then over on Creedmoor Road near Glenwood Avenue, an earlier crash also uh, has a little bit of a red in the sensors there. So we're going to keep an eye on that one, and I'll let you know if it uh, continues to linger or gets worse over the next uh, half hour or so. All right, thanks, Brett. We are working to learn more about a reported shooting at a speedway in Fayetteville. The WRL breaking news tracker arrived on scene before 11 o'clock last night on Grove Street. You can see a heavy police presence. We'll be sure to update you as soon as we learn more. All right, grab your special fashion statement eyewear of the day. Solar Eclipse Day is here, and there'll be a lot of folks across the heart of America that will have a chance to stare up at the sky and see something special today. WRO's Laura Levine joins us live from Moorhead Planetarium in Chapel Hill. There's a watch party being held this afternoon. Oh, you're ready now. You still can't see anything, though, Laura, even in the daylight, right? <laughs> Jeff, I literally can't see a thing, but you know what? I'm getting a little practice here this morning as I look to the sky. We know a lot of people will be doing this later this afternoon. As we know, the eclipse won't be quite as spectacular for us here in the triangle as we weren't, aren't in the path of totality, uh, but we are expecting at least a partial eclipse, about 80% here. So places like Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center, they're going to have some watch parties, if you will. Be sure to grab those glasses if you want to take part in this astronomical event. This is what what it'll look like. The moon will cross in front of the sun, blocking out its light. For people who are in a path of totality, the moon will completely cover the sun. All that's left visible is a bright halo around the sun. The path of totality is up to 123 miles wide as it moves northeast from Mexico to eastern Canada. Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center will hold free outdoor events, including solar observing and hands-on astronomy activities. They'll have a live stream of the eclipse from totality as well as a special eclipse 
eclipse-themed screening of Carolina skies inside the theater. So the extent of the eclipse will be as long as 4 minutes and 27 seconds. We know people are traveling from all over, uh, heading to those cities that will have an unobstructed view of the eclipse. And they have a good reason to do it. The next time we'll see this is 20 years. Laura Levine, WREL News, live in Chapel Hill. There will be extra security at Beddingfield High School in Wilson County after someone posted a threat to the school. A post on the school's Facebook page says law enforcement is investigating. It says the school is aware of the threat that's circulating social media. Big job to do at Dick's Park today. Clean up after a jam-packed Dreamville festival. WRL's Kelsey Coffey joins us live from Dick's Park. And Kelsey, the park reopened a couple of hours ago, but they still have plenty of work to do, right? Jeff, there's still a lot of cleanup left. You can see crews are working on breaking down the main stage right now, and they've been working here for more than eight hours now. Sky 5 flew over the crowd at Dick's Park during the festival. New numbers released from the festival this morning on X show 52,000 people came to Dreamville this year. Dreamville brings thousands of people from all over the country to Raleigh. That means a huge economic boost for the area. Last year's festival brought in $145 million to the local economy. Some festival goers are already looking forward to next year's lineup. And we're working to find out whether 52,000 people showed up for just one day of the festival or if that is the number that shows the count for the entire festival for both days. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, Levin Raleigh. Today, a civil rights law firm will call for public release of a body of for body camera footage of an officer using a taser against at least six people. Representatives from the NAACP say former Warrington Police Officer Sergeant Mark Oakley used excessive force repeatedly. They say Oakley used a taser on people who were not resisting arrest. This video obtained by WREL shows one of his stops. The firm filing the suit says the victims are all black. Oakley was fired from the Warrington Police Department and the SBI is investigating. We're working to learn the names of four people killed in a wrong way crash on I-440 in Raleigh. This happened early Saturday morning. A man was driving a Honda Civic going the wrong way on the Beltline. He had two passengers, a man and a woman in his car, and he hit a Honda Accord driven by a woman. The crash killed all of them, and police have not released their names. And happening today, we'll get an update on Wake County's plan to prevent deaths related to opioid overdoses. Over the next 18 years, Wake County will get $65 million as part of a nationwide settlement that forces drug makers and distributors to pay for their part in the opioid epidemic. Some funds have already helped expand treatment for people with opioid use disorder and provided resources for survivors of an overdose. Today, the County Board of Commissioners will receive a presentation on the plan to spend additional funds funds. At next week's meeting, the board is expected to approve the plan. University of South Carolina women's basketball team beat the Iowa Hawkeyes to clinch the national championship. Gamecock fans are on top of the world. The final score, 87 to 75, capped off an undefeated season for South Carolina. They're the 10th team in Division I history to complete that feat. Iowa's Caitlin Clark, still breaking records all the way to the end. She scored 18 first quarter points, and that marked a championship game record for most points scored in one quarter. Clark boosted her career total points to 3,951. That is more than any Division I man or woman. The men's NCAA championship game is tonight with Purdue taking on UConn. They tip it up 9.20 p.m. from Phoenix. <laughs> Coming up, the best in country music were honored at the CMT Awards. We'll have a look at some of the night's biggest winners and moments. Plus, people across North America will be making plans to see the eclipse today. How people in a small town in Mexico are spending the day looking for their perfect viewing spot. And we should get a good view here. Watching out for the chance of some clouds, especially up near the Virginia line. Coming up, I'll show you Futurecast cloud cover, and I'll show you who has the best chance of seeing the most sunshine. Welcome back on your Monday morning. You're looking live at the WREL Azalea Gardens. They are so beautiful on this sunny morning. You're watching WREL News available on Hulu and the WREL app on your TV or streaming device. 
if you're heading to the gardens or outside at all, uh, pack the allergy medicine because I can't stop sneezing. It is just, it's crazy, but it is beautiful outside nonetheless, Elizabeth. It is gorgeous. <laughs> and the gardens are in full bloom. We had so many people there um, over the weekend, especially Friday when we turned the gardens red. That was so much fun. We need to think of another excuse for that sometime soon. But our sky is beautifully blue this morning, nice and clear in Warrington right now. But Warrington is one of the spots that may cloud up a little bit later. Here's a look at our current situation. We have a line of thunderstorms along a front that stretches up the Mississippi Valley and up toward Ohio. We'll put this into motion and you'll notice, fortunately for folks in Ohio, and Ohio is closest to North Carolina in terms of the path of totality. And a lot of people were going up to Ohio for it today. That rain is starting to move off and it does look like there should be some clearing there this afternoon. But um, that uh, front will arrive here on Thursday and it is causing some problems for folks who are hoping to see the eclipse along the path of totality. We move future cast ahead to a lunchtime and pause it here where we're looking at clear skies. But we have the potential to see some increasing clouds as we head into the afternoon. 315 will be the peak of the eclipse here. I mean, any time between 3 and 330 is going to be really good viewing. It doesn't have to, there's nothing special that happens specifically at 315, but it'll just be the most coverage of the moon over the sun. A little bit of cloud cover up near the Virginia line at that point, so just keep that in mind if you're hoping to see the eclipse. The farther north you are, uh, the more cloud cover we may see. Uh, this version of Futurecast, though, between that time period it shows about 10 to 15 percent coverage in the triangle, and it looks like we would see similar conditions in our southern counties. Here's the path of totality, and again, you can see how it passes right through Ohio and off into uh, the northeast, into New England, and watch as we take that path forward over Texas and uh, parts of the country. You're definitely going to see some cloud cover along that front. You get all the way up to uh, New England and Maine, and it looks clear, but again, a lot of folks are hoping that they're going to have uh, a pretty good view in Ohio as well. So we're going to see 70 75 to 80 percent of the moon covering the sun will be about 75 to 80 percent covered by the moon. 81 percent Roxborough, 75 and Clinton. Um, it's not really going to make that. You won't really notice that much difference between 75 and 80. No point in going anywhere else. Um, but uh, that's that's what we'll see. We'll see increasing clouds and a chance for rain on Tuesday and Wednesday. But it's a small chance. Finally, that front moves forward and gives us a good chance for rain and some thunderstorms on Thursday, especially during the afternoon and evening. Right Right now it's too early to uh, uh, look at too much of a threat for severe storms. We'll have our eye on that 80% chance of rain on Thursday. Of course, we warm up nicely this afternoon after having a cool weekend. We're back into the 70s for this week, even uh, all the way through Saturday until Sunday when we jump to 81. Brett. Looking forward to that, Elizabeth. Let's take a look at traffic here. 815 on a Monday morning and there are a number of crashes out there to tell you about and a few slowdown spots. We're going to zoom in on uh, a couple of them right here. First one is uh, an earlier crash. It has cleared near Perry Creek Road, which is good news. We're starting to see a little bit of improvement on US 1 southbound Capitol Boulevard uh, coming in from the Wake Forest area. Taking a look at your ride from 87 all the way over to Wade Avenue, at least 12 extra minutes down to 11 extra minutes. That's all because of a crash that has blocked the right lane there near Capitol Boulevard. Got a live camera out there at Capitol Boulevard, there's some of that traffic that we're talking about. So 10, 15 extra minutes if you're using that part of the Beltline here this morning to get to work. Let's also take a look at the southern side of Raleigh, about a four minute delay right now. That's all due to just normal traffic congestion this time of morning. Here's our live look right there at Lake Wheeler Road. I'll keep an eye on that one as well. Thanks, Brett. A search is underway for a missing boater in Brunswick County. Oak Island police say Jeffrey Kale went fishing out on the ocean Friday. No one has seen him since. Police say Kale was fishing in his 32-foot Cape Horn boat. The Oak Island Police Department is assisting the U.S. Coast Guard in the search. Relatives of hostages being held by Hamas marched in Washington, D.C. on Sunday. It was the six-month anniversary of the October 7th attacks in Israel. Demonstrators marched from the Washington Monument to the Lincoln Memorial, demanding a ceasefire and for hostages to be released. Hamas killed more than 1,100 people in the October 7th attack, and another 250 were kidnapped. 134 people are still being held captive. The demonstrator said it's long past time to bring the hostages home. Our unified message, our tzakag gedola, our demand to the terrorists, to Hamas, release them now, today. Send our people home. The conflict between Hamas and Israel has left nearly 33,000 Palestinians dead. The FAA is investigating after a piece of metal fell off the engine of a Boeing plane and got stuck in its wing flap. 
You see it in this video posted to social media. It was taken from the Southwest Airlines flight that was leaving Denver International Airport headed for Houston. The plane safely landed back at Denver's airport. Passengers were transferred to another plane and they got to Houston about three hours behind schedule. The deadline to file your taxes is approaching. You have one week until next Monday, April 15th, to file your return. If you don't file by the due date, the IRS will issue a 5% penalty for each month you're late. If you file an extension by next Monday, you'll have until October 15th to file. There's an important warning we need to tell you about before you do your next load of laundry. Eight million laundry detergent pods have been recalled due to faulty packaging. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says the pods could pose the risk of being swallowed by young children and may cause facial injuries. The Tide Pods, Gain, Flings, Ace, and Ariel are all included in this recall. The pods were made between September of 2023 and February 2024 and sold at major retailers like Walmart and Target. The agency says no injuries have been reported. And happening now in the WRA Live Center, a new video just surfaced of a homeowner confronting a suspected thief in his driveway. Take a look at this video, and some might be a little uncomfortable watching this. The homeowner, you can see there, grabbing the guy out of the truck, and of course, they uh, tussle, and he chased him down, and they uh, tussled in the street there for a minute. But that's when the incident turned even more dangerous. The person behind the wheel of that car backed up and then plowed right into that homeowner. Take a look right here plowing right into that homeowner, sending him back into his driveway on the hood of the car. And of course, the homeowner was unharmed, believe it or not. He still had the presence of mind to grab his uh, cell phone camera and uh, take some cell phone video of the license plate. And because of him doing that, the Pierce County uh, Sheriff's Office there in Washington State was able to apprehend one of those teens. But it's a scary situation for that homeowner. That is just shocking, Ken. Wow. Country music was the center stage of the 2024 CMT Music Awards with hit tunes, trophies, and tributes. Here's Ashley Dvorkin with a recap of the most memorable moments. Welcome to the 2024 CMT Awards! Yeah. The 2024 CMT Music Awards, hosted by Kelsey Ballerini, brought a party packed with performances live from Austin, Texas. And it was an especially exciting night for one artist. We're gonna party, Austin! Let's go! Jelly Roll took home three fan-voted trophies, including the coveted Video of the Year for Need a Favor. <laughs> He won that top award just before he rocked out to close out the show. Lainey Wilson earned Female Video of the Year for Watermelon Moonshine. Collaborative Video of the Year went to Carly Pierce for We Don't Fight Anymore, featuring Chris Stapleton. Brooks and Dunn, Wilson and Sammy Hagar were part of an all-star tribute to late country legend Toby Keith. I only hope with this to be as big a part of my community and as good of a friend to fellow artists as she was. Trisha Yearwood received the inaugural June Carter Cash Humanitarian Award and later performed a new song. Austin! The show was full of hit tunes and among the other performers were Keith Urban, Parker McCollum featuring Britney Spencer, Old Dominion with Megan Maroney. Bailey Zimmerman, Cody Johnson, Jason Aldean, Sam Hunt, Ballerini Solo, and with Melissa Etheridge for a quick audience sing-along. Collaborations included Little Big Town and Sugarland, and it's a performance fans can see on the road. It was announced just before the show they're heading out on a tour together this fall. That was Ashley Dvorkin reporting. The knockout round of The Voice begins tonight, and Goldsboro native Tay Lewis will take the stage. Yeah, he is so good. Lewis will perform Nothing on You by Cody Johnson. He'll face, face fellow Team Reba member Asher Havan. The Voice airs at 8 o'clock tonight on WREL. Today's solar eclipse will be captivating at zoos, including the Little Rock Zoo in Arkansas, for both visitors and animals. Dr. Sarah Stoneberg there says the reactions among the animals may vary. Some will sleep, others are expected to become more active. Some of our birds are crepuscular animals, and so they'll start roosting in the middle of the day. And so we'll see some changes when it comes to natural circadian rhythm. 
So she does say the zoo staff will be on the lookout for unusual behavior, and they want guests to be on the lookout for it as well. People across three countries, Mexico, the United States, and Canada, are staking their claim on the best eclipse viewing spots. Spectators in Mazatlan in Mexico gathered to check the sun's position yesterday. At the same time, the eclipse will reach totality today. North America won't experience a coast-to-coast -coast eclipse for 20 more years. Clouds and storms could make it hard to see the eclipse in its full glory in many places along the path of totality. 823 right now, Dick's Park is back open after a dream-filled weekend. Kelsey Coffey tells us about the cleanup efforts there. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning and happy Monday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. We are gearing up for a beautiful day. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner showing us what it feels like right now. It's pretty mild out there. It is. Temperatures are in the upper 40s and yesterday temperatures were down into the 30s. We have even warmer temperatures on the way. Lots of sunshine here in Durham and Raleigh and Fayetteville. It's a beautiful start to the day. The big question is how is it going to be in the middle of the afternoon? Uh, we're starting off with temperatures uh, right now in the mid, mid to upper 40s. We climb into the upper 60s at lunchtime and this afternoon, about the time of the eclipse, we'll see temperatures in the mid 70s. Could have a bit more cloud cover near the Virginia line, but I think from the triangle area southward, we should have clear enough skies to see it. Brett? Thanks, Elizabeth. Busy morning out there on the roads right now, and we're going to check in on a couple of crashes, a couple of new ones that are out there on the roads. Uh, 40 westbound near South Saunders Street. That one's kind of causing some big backups there near Rock Quarry Road and between those two exits. I'm keeping an eye on that one. Uh, give yourself a few extra minutes there. Another serious crash though, Wade Avenue at Blue Ridge Road. It's eastbound Wade Avenue as you're coming into Raleigh and near the Beltline. Lots of yellow there on the sensors. I'm keeping an eye on that one as well as that uh, continues to, to be out there. And then a six minute delay if you're trying to get from 87 all the way to Wade Avenue using the Beltline right now, Michelle. All right, thanks, Brad. Dick's Park is now reopened to the public after a jam-packed weekend at Dreamville. The festival ended last night with J. Cole, the festival's creator, closing out. Last year's festival brought in $145 million to the local economy. Organizers predict record attendance this year. Coming up next on Fox 50, how you can get in on the eclipse celebrations happening later today. And coming up next on today, one-on-one -on -one with Nicole Ritchie as she releases don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Shot in 4K ultra high definition. Your number one source for local news. WRAL News. Coverage you can count on. It's eclipse today. We'll see a partial eclipse across our viewing area. But we're watching out for cloud cover. I'll show you where it looks cloudiest this afternoon. Dick's Park is back open this morning and cleanup is underway after Dreamville. Coming up, reaction from festival goers as they're already looking forward to next year. We're getting you prepared to watch today's eclipse. What you need to know and where you can go before watching today's rare astronomical event. It is quite something. Yeah. Fashion statement and all. <laughs> you have the glasses. I do, yeah. yeah. They're, uh, they're pretty hip. <laughs> I, I didn't save my ones from last time, but yeah. got my hands on a pair so I can you know, spend a minute looking mm -hmm. at them. I'm Jeff Hogan. Good to have you with us. And I'm Michelle McCartick. Yeah, we'll talk about that coming up. But first, we have to talk to Elizabeth to see what the mm -hmm. weather is going to be like uh, for later on today for anybody who has the special glasses and wants to go uh, see the solar eclipse. Yeah, looking at uh, mostly clear skies this morning in Durham, where it is 49 degrees. We check out Futurecast and kind of push things ahead and pause it there at lunchtime. We're looking at mostly clear skies. But as we get closer to the time of the eclipse, it begins at 2 o'clock and it peaks at 315 for us. It looks like there could be some cloud cover near the Virginia line, possibly uh, down as far south as Durham or Raleigh, uh, but definitely looks like south of Raleigh, which should be nice and clear. Hopefully it's not enough that you wouldn't be able to see it. Sometimes, you know, on the edge of some clouds like that, it's just high, thin cloud cover. So we're, uh, we will be hopeful that there'll be plenty of sunshine to be able to see it. And you do need your eclipse glasses. What you'll see here, uh, we're not in the path of totality, so it's not going to become dark or anything like that. But if you have the glasses and you can look at it, it'll look like somebody took a big bite out of a cookie. <laughs> That's what 
the sun will look like for us. Here's a look at our potential cloud cover forecast. About 10 to 15 percent of the sky covered with clouds um, in that forecast. Our temperatures still 39 in Roxborough. Elsewhere, we're looking at mainly mid to upper 40s. We jumped to 51, though, already in Clinton. And we'll see a nice warm day after highs in the 60s over the weekend. We'll climb into the upper 60s by lunchtime and in the mid to upper 70s for this afternoon. Now, more clouds are on our way this week, as well as a chance for rain. I'll show you which day looks the wettest. Coming up, Brett. Thanks, Elizabeth. Continuing to look a, a continuing to keep an eye on a number of crashes out there at 832 here on a Monday morning. As you head out to work, if you haven't headed out already, there are a number of slowdown spots that give you uh, an idea of what it's going to look like uh, on your way to work. South Saunders Street near uh, I, on I-40 westbound near South Saunders Street. There is an earlier crash causing some pretty big backups there near Rock Quarry Road. Give yourself about 10 extra minutes there on the southern side of Raleigh. Wade Avenue uh, at Blue Ridge Road. That is also a crash. It's Wade Avenue coming into the downtown area uh, near the Beltline there and it's these backups have stretched all the way back towards 40. So definitely give yourself plenty of extra time if you're using Wade uh, to get into Raleigh. Looking at the Beltline itself though, down to a four minute delay. That's good news because of an earlier crash near Capitol Boulevard and has jumped back up to five minutes, but it's uh, right there as you approach Capitol Boulevard. Once you get on the other side of Capitol Boulevard, the Beltline looking good right now. We are working to get more information about a reported shooting at a speedway in Fayetteville. The WRL breaking news tracker was there on the scene before 11 last night on Grove Street. You can see there was a heavy police presence there putting down some uh, markers. There's some evidence markers. We'll be sure to update you as soon as we get more information. Eclipse Day, it's here. Everyone in the U.S. will have the chance to see the moon at least partially blocking the sun. As WRL's Laura Levine shares, there is a big party at the Moorhead Planetarium in Chapel Hill. Here in Chapel Hill, I am ready with my glasses on. We know we'll see a lot of people with these on as they look to the sky today, hoping to get a glimpse of all of this. We know that the eclipse won't be quite as spectacular for us here in the triangle as we aren't in the path of totality, but we will see a partial eclipse about 80% here. So places like Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center, they're going to have some watch parties, if you will. So be sure to grab these glasses if you want to take part in this astronomical event. This is what it'll look like. The moon will cross in front of the sun, blocking out its light. For people who are in a path of totality, the moon will completely cover the sun. All that's left visible is a bright halo around the sun. The path of totality is up to 123 miles wide as it moves northeast from Mexico to eastern Canada. Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center will hold free outdoor events, including solar observing and hands-on astronomy activities. They'll have a live stream of the eclipse from totality, as well as special eclipse-themed screenings of Carolina skies inside the theater. The extent of the totality will be 4 minutes and 27 seconds. We know people are traveling from all over the world to these cities that will have an unobstructed view of the solar eclipse. Here locally, we know many people have a good reason to still want to be a part of this because it'll be another 20 years before we see this again. Laura Levine, WRL News in Chapel Hill. And some very important things to keep in mind during the eclipse to keep your eyes safe. Regular sunglasses won't do it. No matter how dark they are, they're not safe for viewing the sun or looking directly at it at any point. Safe solar viewers are thousands of times darker and they should comply with what's called the ISO 12312-2 international standard. You see it's a fairly long string of numbers there. Take a look at it on your screen. NASA does not endorse any particular brand of these solar viewers. And remember, we are not in the path of totality, so you do need to keep your eclipse eyeglasses on the entire time you are viewing this eclipse. Looking at the sun without the proper eye protection can lead to permanent eye damage. School districts across our area that are in session today will give kids a chance to see the eclipse safely. Governor Roy Cooper will be spending the afternoon with some of those students for the exciting educational event. He'll visit Pleasant Grove Elementary School in Morrisville to watch the eclipse with students there. Dreamville ended last night with J. Cole, the festival's creator, wrapping up the two-day event. WRL's Kelsey Coffee was there as crews began cleanup efforts so the park, Dick's Park, can reopen. 
Dick's Park is now back open to the public, but crews are still here cleaning up after Dreamville. This is a look now at crews working on breaking down the main stage. Sky Five flew over the crowd at Dick's Park during the festival. New numbers released from the festival this morning on X show 52,000 people came to Dreamville this year. Dreamville brings thousands of people from all over the country to Raleigh. That means a huge economic boost for the entire area. Last year's festival brought in $145 million to the local economy. Some festival goers are already looking forward to next year's lineup. We already plan the next year, so when they, <laughs> when they drop saying Dreamville is coming again, we're coming. We're working to find out whether 52,000 people were reported to show up for one day of the festival or if that was the overall attendance for the entire weekend. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News in Raleigh. There'll be extra security at Beddingfield High School in Wilson County after someone posted a threat to the school. A post on the school's Facebook page says law enforcement is investigating it. It says the school is aware of the threat that is circulating out there on social media. Wolfpack men's basketball team is home this morning after the NCAA Final Four loss in Arizona. Their fans were right there to greet them when they returned. Nice welcome back. You don't always get after a loss. And fans tell WREL they could not be more proud of their team. Some fans waited over an hour at the Dale Basketball Center on campus to get a glimpse of the ACC tournament champs. The last time the team won the national championship was in 1983. I'm 43 years old. So I was three when they won in 83, and I was six or seven when they won the ACC title. So I don't remember those things. So this was, you know, my once once in a lifetime thing to see them do a run like this and it's just been awesome. The fans tell WRL the team should be very proud of a great season and use this momentum to work hard to try to win the NCAA tournament next year. Are you looking to fill a late night craving? Well, you might be out of luck. Coming up, how the pandemic is still leaving a lasting effect on 24 hour diners. And hip hop fans are still talking about J. Cole's performance at Dreamville. Why the rapper said he chose to apologize to Kendrick Lamar about a track from his latest project. And as we head to break, here's a live look in Zebulon. Lots of sunshine here. Elizabeth Gardner will tell us about this week's warm up and when we can expect a bit of rain. Eight forty two is the time right now. Sure, we'll put this in motion right here. Wrightsville and our live look as <laughs> it moves down Cape Fear River right there. That's a little more stable shots right there. But sunshine abounds for many, many all the way up to the triangle as well. Elizabeth Gardner is over in the WR Severe Weather Center. Gardens look great, sunshine on them, nice cool start to our day. Oh, it is beautiful outside across the area right now. We've got a gorgeous week ahead, except for some clouds and a few showers, but temperatures are warming back up into the 70s. We take a live look at the WRL Gardens in full bloom right now. Of course, we had uh, so much fun turning the gardens red on Friday. There were a lot of people there over the weekend. Of course, you know, proximity to Dreamville and prom and all of that. I mean, what a, what a beautiful time it is in our gardens. Right now it's 49 degrees and our winds are calm. Our temperature climbs into the 60s by lunchtime and into the mid-70s for highs this afternoon. Of course, the big question is, will it or will it not be cloudy when the eclipse rolls through here, uh, starting at 2 and peaking at about uh, 3.15? So we take a look, and this version of future cast shows a little bit of cloud cover from the Triangle area northward. That's been fairly consistent up near the Virginia line with that chance for some cloud cover. Hoping it'll be just some high, thin clouds, but I feel like from the Triangle area southward, we're in pretty good shape. I would be a little more concerned up near the Virginia line. And then a bit more cloud cover rolls in later on this afternoon. We take a look at this forecast, though, and from, say, 2 to 4 o'clock, which is really when the eclipse is going on over us, it's about a 10 to 15 percent coverage of clouds over the sky. But that's going to be for the Triangle area. 43 in Roxborough right now is 48 in Goldsboro, 46 Southern Pines, and 51 in Clinton. The big change happens today with our winds shifting to southerly and really warming things up. Already, we're almost 10 degrees warmer right now than we were this time yesterday in the Triangle. 76 in Raleigh and Durham, 79 in Fayetteville, and just a beautiful day on tap. And the cool air that was with us over the weekend, we had 60s for highs both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, that is replaced by some warmer air with that flow coming out of the south. 70 is our normal high, so we're going to be seeing temperatures either at or above normal uh, for the next five to really seven or maybe eight days. 46 is our normal low, and we're way above that uh, starting tomorrow with overnight lows in the 50s and 60s, a little bit cooler for Saturday. Looking ahead to this coming week, 
weekend and into early next week, the 13th through the 17th. We have a good chance for above normal temperatures. And again, normal is 70. So if you like those warm temperatures, it looks like that's what we'll see. We may also see some rain, a 30% chance Tuesday and Wednesday and an 80% chance on Thursday. Thursday's the day that we're going to see a cold front coming across our area. That could bring us some scattered thunderstorms. And of course, it is April, so we'll be watching closely for our potential for severe storms. Right now, our weekend looks beautiful with sunshine and warm temperatures. Happening now in the WRN Live Center, brand new video into our newsroom of this major fire that uh, engulfed uh, housing uh, development that was under construction. Firefighters there in, in this uh, suburb of Phoenix, Arizona, still on the scene this morning, uh, working to make sure that all the hotspots are out there. You can see that in that fire engulfed the entire subdivision that was under construction. Uh, fire officials say crews right now uh, are in a defensive strategy meeting. They're on the scene, just making sure that there are no hotspots available. Still no word on what caused this fire. Any updates? We'll keep you updated here in the WRL Live Center. More human remains were found in a Wisconsin neighborhood on Friday and Saturday, less than a week after someone found a human leg inside a Milwaukee park. Deputies were searching an area near a park and nearby train tracks overnight. Body parts were first found Friday in a neighborhood. On Saturday, police were called a few blocks away for reports of more human remains being found. A human leg, as I mentioned, was found on Tuesday at a park in the city. People who live in that area, they're shocked just really brings into question what is wrong with people. I'm, it's, it's heinous. A lot. The sheriff's office is investigating the severed leg as a homicide. A person of interest is in custody. Deputies have not said if the other body parts are connected to that case. New this morning, former President Donald Trump says abortion rights should be left to states. Now, Trump made a post on his Truth Social account announcing his position. Didn't specify what number of weeks during a pregnancy he would support an abortion ban. He says he believes in exceptions of abortion for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. The announcement comes after a Florida ruling upheld the state's ban on abortions after 15 weeks. Nearly 13 percent of new mothers say they were mistreated by medical staff during childbirth. That's according to a new study that shows one out of eight new moms are shouted at, scolded or ignored by a health care provider during their deliveries. And some new mothers said they were denied treatment or forced to undergo treatment they did not want. Studies have shown that black women are mistreated at higher rates, sometimes leading to death. Millennials and Gen Zers are experiencing a new wave of anxiety when it comes to medical costs. According to a new study, 67% of Gen Z, 62% of Millennials avoid seeking health care because of the price. That's compared to 46% of Americans overall. A similar study done last year by the Federal Reserve found a quarter of all Americans went without medical care in 2022 because of the price. It's getting a lot harder to get a late night meal. The number of restaurants offering 24 hour service is down about 18 percent since 2020. That's according to data from Yelp. The pandemic caused many outlets to change operating hours and consumer behavior has shifted in the years since. People are eating dinner earlier and restaurants are also dealing with higher labor and food costs, which has led to some closing earlier. But there are signs of a rebound. The majority of Denny's are open 24 hours and plenty of IHOP locations are open around the clock on Fridays and Saturdays. And nearly all Waffle House locations are running 24 hours again. If you're still looking for the perfect spot to watch the solar eclipse today, how about Campbell University? The school's Astronomical Society is hosting a public viewing event this afternoon at 2 o'clock. The club and physics department will have several filtered telescopes set up for people to use. This is happening in front of the Pope Convocation Center. This is regular season finale for the Carolina Hurricanes, and they were able to bring home a win. The Canes beat the Columbus Blue Jackets 3-zip. Last night's win marks f the fourth win in five games for the Hurricanes on quite a roll now as they will hit the road for their last four games of the regular season. They'll play on home ice, though, in about two weeks as they get the Eastern Conference playoffs started.
New this morning, country music artist Morgan Wallen has been arrested on felony charges after he allegedly threw a chair from the roof of a bar in downtown Nashville. Officers say they were standing in front of Eric Church's chief's bar when they saw the chair hit the street, landing just feet away from officers. Witnesses say Wallen picked up the chair and threw it, laughing after he did that. The singer now faces charges of reckless endangerment, danger to the public, and disorderly conduct. University of South Carolina women's basketball team defeated the Iowa Hawkeyes and clinched the national championship. Clark set a few more records on her way out the door. The Iowa Hawkeyes star erupted in the first quarter of their national championship game against South Carolina. Caitlin Clark had 18 points in the first 10 minutes of the game. That's the most points ever scored by a player in a single quarter of a championship game. Beyonce has made history with her new country album. David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. 16 carriages driving away. Cowboy Carter has debuted number one on the Billboard 200 album chart with the biggest sales week of any album so far this year. It's Beyonce's eighth album to top the chart, and she's the first black woman ever to debut number one on Billboard's top country albums chart. Take this case. He's got a gun. A gun! We've got to get the women to safety. Okay, this is exactly what I'm talking this about. This is what she's saying. Look over here. I will look at it. Do you even know what it is I do? I'm out of The first full trailer is out for Pool Man. Chris Pine makes his directorial debut and leads an ensemble cast including Danny DeVito, Annette Bening, Wanda DeWise, and Jennifer Jason Lee. Pool Man swims into theaters May 10th. <laughs> More honors for Poor Things. Emma Stone and Mark Ruffalo won Best Actress and Actor in a Science Fiction or Fantasy Movie at the fourth annual Critics' Choice Super Awards. Three other films also picked up two prizes. Tom Cruise and Rebecca Ferguson from Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning were named Best Actor and Actress in an Action Movie. Talk to Me won Best Horror Movie, and its star, Sophie Wilde, received Best Actress in a Horror Movie. And Godzilla Minus One took Best Science Fiction or Fantasy Movie, and Godzilla himself was named Best Overall Movie Villain. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. While on stage at Dreamville, J. Cole addressed some drama he's been a part of with rapper Kendrick Lamar. Lamar dissed J. Cole and Drake in his track Like That two weeks ago. Then J. Cole dissed Lamar in his new song Seven Minute Drill, released on Friday, the day before Dreamville. Cole addressed the Dreamville crowd, saying that he regrets the diss. He said that he felt pressured to respond publicly after seeing the response Lamar's verse got. Kristen Wiig returned to Saturday Night Live, joining the Five Timers Club. And during her fifth time hosting, Wig brought back a fan-favorite character, Aunt Linda. This was during the weekend update segment. She kicked it off by mistaking current co-anchor Colin with former anchor Seth Meyers. Wig left the show as a cast member in 2012. <laughs> He's so funny. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All right, well, fans of Curb Your Enthusiasm are saying goodbye to that show that spanned 25 years. The final episode, appropriately named No Lessons Learned, aired on Sunday. Larry David, the creator and star of the show, took a trip down memory lane, nodding to moments throughout the show's 12 seasons. We won't spoil the finale for you, but David used it as a way to redo the Seinfeld finale that he was criticized for. Shake Shack has thrown some shade at Chick-fil-A, and you can cash in on this rivalry. Fast food chain announced it'll be giving out free fried chicken sandwiches every Sunday in April. It comes at a price, though. You do have to place at least a $10 order to use the promo code Chicken Sunday for your free sandwich. And while the chain doesn't explicitly call out Chick-fil-A by name, the company does say that the goal of the new deal is to, quote, one up a famously closed on Sundays chicken sandwich fast food chain. Pretty sure we know who they're talking about. Yeah. All right, before we head off the break, here are the winning lottery numbers on your screen. We'll get another check on weather and traffic for you coming up next.